Hi everyone, it's Janine here, and in today's video we are going to be learning about the chain rule, which is a rule that we use for taking derivatives of composite functions. So the chain rule tells us that the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And so all this is, is we're taking the derivative of the outside function f and keeping the inside function g of x the same, and we're multiplying by the derivative of the inside function. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples and apply this. So let's go ahead and take a look at these examples here. So in this first example, we have the function y is equal to the quantity 2x plus 1 to the fifth power. And here we have a composite function. We have this outer function, which is this power of 5, and we have this inner function, 2x plus 1. So we need to use the chain rule. And so let's go ahead and find the derivative. So we have y prime is equal to, and we're going to go ahead and start off by taking the derivative of our outer function, which is this power of 5. So we're going to use the power rule. So we're going to go ahead and bring the 5 down, keep everything inside the same. So we have 2x plus 1, and then we're going to subtract 1 from our exponent. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. And we're going to multiply by the derivative of our inner function. So the derivative of 2x plus 1 is just equal to 2. And we can go ahead and simplify this by multiplying this 5 and 2 together. And we end up with y prime is equal to 5 times 2, which is equal to 10, times the quantity 2x plus 1 to the fourth power. And so this is our final answer. In this next example here, we have the function y is equal to the quantity x squared plus 3x minus 5 to the 8th power. And here we have another composite function. We have this outer function, which is this power of 8. And we have this inner function, x squared plus 3x minus 5. So we need to use the chain rule. So let's go ahead and find its derivative. So we have y prime is equal to... And we're going to go ahead and start out by taking the derivative of our outer function and keep our inner function the same. So here our outer function is this power of 8, so we're going to use the power rule. So we're going to go ahead and bring down the 8. We're going to keep everything inside the same. So we have x squared plus 3x minus 5. We're going to subtract 1 from our exponent, so 8 minus 1 is equal to 7. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of our inside function. So the derivative of x squared plus 3x minus 5 is equal to 2x plus 3. And so this is our final answer. In this next example, here we have the function y is equal to the square root of x squared plus 5. And notice here that this function is given to us in radical form. So whenever we're asked to find the derivative of a function given to us in radical form, we're going to want to rewrite the radical in the form of a fractional exponent. So we can rewrite this function as y is equal to the quantity x squared plus 5 to the 1 half power. And so we can see here that we have a composite function. Our outer function is this 1 half power, and our inner function is this x squared plus 5. So this means that we need to use the chain rule. And so let's go ahead and find the derivative. So we have y prime is equal to the derivative of our outer function, which is this 1 half power, which means that we need to use the power rule. So we're going to go ahead and bring down this 1 half. We're going to keep everything inside the same. So this is times the quantity x squared plus 5. And then we're going to subtract 1 from our exponent. So 1 half minus 1 is equal to negative 1 half. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of our inner function. So the derivative of x squared plus 5 is equal to 2x. And we can see that this 2 in the numerator cancels out with this 2 in the denominator. And we end up with y prime is equal to x over the square root of x squared plus 5. And this is our final answer. And let's go ahead and take a look at one more example. So in this last example here, we have the function y is equal to x squared times the quantity 4x minus 3 cubed. So here we have a product of two functions, which means that we need to use the product rule. So let's go ahead and start off by labeling our two functions. So here we have our first function. And here we have our second function. And now let's go ahead and take the derivative. So we have y prime is equal to the first function, which here is equal to x squared times the derivative of the second function. And so the second function is a composite function, so we need to use the chain rule. 
So let's go ahead and start off by taking the derivative of our outside function, which is this power of three. So we're gonna go ahead and use the power rule. So we're gonna go ahead and bring down the three, keep everything inside the same. So we have four X minus three, and then we're gonna subtract one from our exponent. So three minus one is equal to two. And then we're gonna multiply by the derivative of our inside function. So the derivative of four X minus three is just equal to four. And then we're gonna to add to this the second, which is just this function, the quantity four X minus three cubed, And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of our first function. So the derivative of x squared is just equal to 2x. And from here, let's go ahead and simplify. So we have y prime is equal to, and let's go ahead and multiply this 3 and 4 together. So 3 times 4 is equal to 12. So we have 12x squared times 4x minus 3 squared. And this is plus 2x times the quantity 4x minus 3 cubed. And from here, we can see that these two terms share a common factor. So we can go ahead and factor out a 2x times 4x minus 3 squared. And so this is multiplied by 6x plus 4x minus 3. And from here, let's go ahead and combine like terms. So we can combine these two terms here. And we end up with y prime is equal to 2x times 4x minus 3 squared times 10x minus 3. And this is our final answer. And so that is how you use the chain rule to find the derivative of a composite function. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.